interview question um, record on April 25th, I'm sorry, April 26th, 2021, um, on AAPI project um, with interview number one. All right. Um, thank you for agreeing to this interview with me. Is it okay if we hit record? Yes. Okay. So, if I may ask, <clears throat> who are you? I'm a Chinese American tutor. And uh, in, in regards to that tutoring, uh, what do you tutor precisely? Uh, math and science, or whatever I can get my hands on. Okay. And then, uh, where are you from? I'm from Reno. Uh, Reno, Nevada, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, born and raised? Yes. Right. And where are you living today? Uh, here, Reno, Nevada. Okay. Uh, have you lived anywhere else? Uh, I lived in, uh, New York and Seattle and San Francisco. Okay. So your experiences have mostly, mainly been Reno, though? Um, yeah, probably 80% of my life has been spent in Reno. Okay. Do you speak any other languages uh, besides uh, English or, or, or other? Uh, no. Okay. And about your family, um, where, uh, where, where's your family from? Uh, all my grandparents are from China. Okay. And what, uh, so, also your immediate family, is that, are they also located here in Reno? Uh, yeah, my parents are in Reno, and my brother and sister are in Reno. Uh -huh. Um, so, quick side question, uh, family, um, how big of a family do you have? Uh, there's, uh, my, my two parents and my one brother and one sister. Uh -huh. Cool. Uh, so, this is a relatively small, regular size family. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, six children. 2.6. Uh, sounds fair. So there's a there's pets in the house. Uh, no, no, we're we're just statistics. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so uh, what's your level of uh, high school education? Uh, master's degree. Huh? So I think you also have a bachelor's degree. Yep. Yeah. Huh? <coughs> okay. sure. Thanks. Um, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what is your uh, education or background in education from? Uh, University of Nevada and Cornell University. Okay. Thank you. And uh, what race uh, or ethnicity or uh, nationality do you identify yourself as? Uh, Asian. Okay. Um, now, kind of getting a little more, this may be a little personal. Uh, let me know how you feel about, you know, let me know if this is too per terribly personal. Uh, you don't have to answer if you don't feel. Uh, in reference to your personal experiences here in Nevada, and overall, um, in your life, what is the worst experience you've had with discrimination that you believe was rooted with your ethnicity? Well, when I was in first grade, some of the other first graders uh, started making fun of me and calling me chink and other slurs. Uh, yeah, and so this was done by first graders. And so my, my question is, where did they learn these terms? I had never heard of those terms before at the time. Where, where do they hear, hear of them? I also heard of them from their family members or their uh, role models. Okay. Um, now, in reference to that situation and that event, um, did that, I mean, did that scar you? Did that bother you? Or did it just, like, leave a lasting memory? Well, it just left a lasting memory. I didn't really care at the time because I didn't know that um, those, those terms were meant in a derogatory way because I didn't know what those terms mean, because I had never heard those terms before. Mm -hmm. And looking back at it, I assumed that uh, the, the other kids didn't really understand what they were saying or the you know, socio-political context of what they were saying. Mm -hmm. um, but, but now that I look back at it, it is interesting that, that they even knew to say that. Mm -hmm. You know, to say that, like, like, where, where did they get these words? And the only reason why I knew that it was a problem was because the teacher chastised them for uh, saying these things, and, and, and I was like, well, it's a big deal. I don't, I don't understand why they can't call me these things. Um, but the teacher was upset, and so I slowly, eventually learned uh, that that was something that I probably should be upset by. So, by proxy, you learned, like, 
this is a standard you can't let or permit to be, you know, said to you or, or, or accepted. Uh, yeah, something like that. I guess uh, we're just uh, generally supposed to be upset by racial slurs, I guess. Well, yeah, fair. And so, you know, I, I don't want to develop this a little further. Going on in life, you know, as an adult, you know, as, a, as a younger man, as an adult, uh, <clears throat> and whatnot, uh, to present day, you know, has, have you had that kind of encounter in those stages in your life or, or whatnot? Uh, no, the more, I mean, the older I, the older I got, the, the less I uh, experienced um, uh, what I perceived to be uh, racism. That doesn't mean that it's not happening. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I eventually grew to um, either not see it, or maybe adults just keep it inside if they are racist. So when you mean uh, not see it, like uh, do you do you kind of accept or under you know accept that you may miss or not be aware that it happens or it's happening to you at times? Uh, well, I think I think I just have. Um, a lot of other things to think about, and uh, huh. maybe I uh, just don't tend to. Uh, maybe, maybe I tend to just see, try to see the bright side, I guess. Okay. Uh, but obviously, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and uh, perception is just uh, you know the world is what we make of it, I guess. That's right. That, that helps you understand that question a little better. So thank you for that. Um, and that kind of leads me to the next uh, question, Kevin. You know, perception of, of, of the issue today, because it's the issue of the day, or you say issue in your, in reference to, um, you know, the, a lot of things that are going on in the country and in society. Do you think that there's a problem today with hate, and is it growing, and it's growing and centering attention to Asian Americans today? Uh, I think racism is a complex issue. It's not black and white, <clears throat> you know, good guys and bad guys. I think everybody, and I mean everybody, including myself, you, and anyone listening to this, sorry to offend anyone, <laughs> I, think ev I think everybody is subconsciously racist, and it's not its not their fault, it's not your fault, I just think everybody's subconsciously racist. Uh, obviously the China virus thing doesn't help. That's fair. So, um, you know what, I, I really, I think you kind of hit that pretty well, I think, uh, um, you know, it kind of, kind of gives me, uh, yeah, I, I don't know how to redirect that, because I think you got that pretty well there. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, uh, just to kind of explain subconsciously racist, are you kind of saying that, you know, we, everyone has this, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but what do you mean by that precisely? Well, I, I don't believe that everybody uh, is racist in the way that, you know, say KKK members are racist Over. In, in that they, uh, you know, want the worst for other races or that they want to kill people of certain races. I just mean that everybody has a subconscious response to different races and that we all have prejudices and we've all, uh, we all know her. We often, we, we pretty much all know the stereotypes, and, uh, and, and and most of us sort of have an emotional reaction to um, certain types of faces. Hmm. And you know, I think everybody, I think a lot of people uh, are against racism, which is why we're talking about this. Hmm. And I think that a lot of people try to fight their own subconscious racism. Uh, some people don't, hmm. uh, but. But I, I guess that's a, a struggle that um, a struggle that we're all going through right now, and, and this, that's exactly why we're this is, that's exactly why the entire nation is talking about it right now. I guess. Thank you. That was very thoughtful of you. Thank you. Uh, and I guess kind of talking back to the big other issue is your why we're wearing masks right now, and uh, you know, even in, in close proximity. Uh, do you know of anyone that's been sick with coronavirus or had you know anyone impacted by the coronavirus pandemic? Uh, I don't know anyone who um, has gotten sick or died from the coronavirus within my social circle. 
Uh, but I have heard of uh, certain uh, big people, like semi-celebrities, that uh, have gotten sick or died from it. But I do have a friend who uh, did get sick uh, from the coronavirus from Ireland. Or, no, she's not from Ireland. She's from, she's from the United States, but she traveled in Ireland. And uh, then she, she got sick for a little while, and then uh, everything turned out fine, unfortunately. Yeah. So, so this has kind of been, you've been kind of lucky and fortunate that your social circle hasn't been affected by this so much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every, all the, uh, all the older people, uh, above the age of 65, uh, in my life, um, in my social circle, uh, are alive and well. Mm -hmm. But we have to worry about the, the next strain coming in. Right. Because there's a new variants out there. Yeah, yeah, the next variant of coronavirus. Fair enough, fair enough. And uh, kind of um, adding this following part here, um, you know, now I'm kind of switching back to, you know, the, the, the kind of the, the issue stemming from the coronavirus and the rhetoric behind it. You know, if I were to ask you, you know, just off the top of your head, um, what, what a specific crime or act or legal action is, what would you define or consider a hate crime? Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure about the legal definition of a hate crime, you know, that it has a, a lot of legal context that I'm not, uh, uh, that, that I'm not knowledgeable about. Sir? Um, now, what should now if you were given the chance to write the legislation or a policy prescription for a hate crime or racism or anything t specifically towards the Asian American community, um, what would you write it as? Or what, what should be? Um, I guess the legal definition of a hate crime should be enough to deter people from hurting Asians solely because they're Asian. Uh, obviously, there are side effects like people getting harsher sentences because they hurt someone who happened to be Asian, even if that was not their intention or motive. Uh, but I guess, I guess, I guess, if their motive was only to hurt someone, but not because they're Asian, but just because they wanted to hurt someone, then I guess supposedly they should get a less harsh uh, sentence. Okay. So you see the difference between, you know, intentionality and, and intent, well, like, his direct intentionality of harming someone of, of a certain class, race, class, or creed, and then just simply, like, I want to cause them harm. Uh, well, I don't really know the difference or see the difference, and that was partially sarcasm <laughs> on my part. I but, apologize for having uh, sorry, I'm sorry. sorry uh, about that. but I, I guess... I guess I just don't know that much about the history of, um, of hate crime legislation. Mm -hmm. But I will say uh, I am happy not to be in a concentration camp. Yeah? Uh, I guess there's some context behind that now, so I'll do that. I'll do that. Um, and going back to that again concurrently, do you think that in, in America, do you think America, in America, there is an issue? with hate towards Asian, Amer Asians, Asian Americans today? Um, I've heard stories of um, a lot of Asians getting harassed or uh, physically assaulted or violently assaulted um, in the United States, but I haven't experienced anything like that in uh, Reno, Nevada myself, uh, so I'm uh, fortunate to have that kind of anecdotal evidence, mm -hmm. if anecdotal evidence is evidence at all. I'll take that, because it's exactly what I need to understand uh, in reference to anecdotal experience, because um, your, you know, your answer, or at least your, your experience is unique in that I, um, you, you, your, your, your experiences have been, you've been lucky, I, I, statistically, and, uh, well, not statistically, but um, you haven't you haven't been subject to negative terms and terminology or actions, which is standard. Most 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 people don't get physically assaulted, 
but your experiences have been rather um, um, limited, so I, I, I appreciate you giving me some more context and clarity on that, um, because I, I definitely would like to hear that kind of anecdotal information for especially the study, uh, for the su survey, so thank you. Um, so, the next question I guess I have, um, you know, from your standpoint, having had a pretty unique perspective, or a limited perspective, uh, no, not limited. Having had your experiences and your and uh, here in Reno and whatnot, what should be done to mitigate or lessen the problem? And where do you think the problem of hate or hate towards Asian Americans is directed from? People think that because China informed everyone of what happened, that Chinese people or Asians are to blame. It's like killing the messenger. Okay. Uh, can you elaborate on that just a little bit? Because I guess I want to understand the, you know, you know, the the the, the, the messenger element of that. So, um, you know, yeah. Can you kind of elaborate on that? Well, it's it's like if if somebody drops a twenty dollar bill in the ground, and I go up and grab the 20 and give it to him, and he blames me for, for stealing the $20 bill. That's, that's what I mean by it's like killing the messenger. So China told us about the coronavirus. They told us uh, the location of where it came from. They basically uh, blamed themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and In Wuhan province. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and said where, you know, that it was, you know, somebody eating the bat or whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the more racist individuals in the United States react to that by thinking that we're in some kind of, uh, not just a pandemic, but uh, 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 that, that China was uh, uh, implementing bio-warfare on the United States in this way. Well, if, if, we were into, if, if China was implementing bio-warfare, why, why did they why did they tell us uh, everything why were they so completely transparent mm -hmm. about everything uh, you know I mean you would think that 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 was because they were trying to mitigate the issue in order to try to get it under control mm -hmm. um, but everybody thinks that or not everybody but a lot of people think that we're in some kind of bio war mm -hmm. or that there's some kind of there's bio warfare going on with, uh, with China when in fact China was one of the was was pretty much 100% transparent. Okay. I, I want to ask a side note on that. So if you're just kind of using your analogy, and I think it's a really good analogy, if this had happened in Egypt or Nigeria or South Africa, if it had origin point, if its origin point had been there instead, do you think that we would get the same kind of backlash towards Africans and African Americans instead? Uh, I would think so, yeah. Um, I think that uh, simple-minded people think in simple ways, mm -hmm. and when, uh, when, when, when a president uses another country or another continent, continent as a scapegoat uh, or, or to blame for, for something that happens, then I think that they just tend to I think those kinds of people tend to to blame people who look like those <laughs> those people. Um, I kind of want to hit on something you just raised, and I think it's a good point. Not because I agree with it, but you raised the point in reference to the pre former President Trump um, being a point of origin about some of this. Um, just simple observation, and I'm not asking you know, exactly your personal opinion, per se, but just as an observer of the last year and a half. Do you, do you observe, did you observe, or was, uh, did you get the impression that the former president was a source for rhetoric and um, negative rhetoric towards Asian Americans? Um, I, I think on the face of, I think on the face of it, uh, 
yes, that, that is definitely the case because the the president's biggest power, besides having the nuclear button, is uh, his power to influence people, uh, as he is something of a celebrity, and this president in particular was always something of a celebrity. Uh, so yes, I think he was quite influential in uh, in people uh, perceiving these things in this way, if only because he coined a very catchy slogan. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm going to reference two of those right now that I didn't think of. Um, and again, if this caused any harm or offense, let me know. I apologize. Are you talking about calling it the ch when, when, when he used it, the China virus, the Wu flu, and things like that? Yeah, the Kung Flu and the China virus are two very catchy slogans that can be used in, uh, to, uh, based on the fact that they're easily remembered, uh, they can be used to make people perceive Asians in a certain way. Um, and I think that it's obvious that those those catchphrases have uh, uh, derogatory connotations towards Asian Americans or Asians in general, including Asian Americans. Thank you for your elaboration on that. Uh, help me out on understanding that element in, in, in regards to you know, the, uh, you know, your, from, your, from your basic ob place of observation and also from your background. So I appreciate that you sharing that with me. Thank you. Thanks. Now you're welcome. Um, and then I guess we're slowly coming to the, towards the end of our interview here. Uh, and again, I thank you for your time for that. Um, uh, given what we've talked about tonight, um, and, and, you know, and again, thank you for answering my questions previously. And to note, uh, I did submit these questions ahead of time to uh, have some more thought, uh, uh, thoughtful dialogue to be engaged in. And we've successfully appears to have done that. Um, solutions. Let's talk about solutions and resolutions to deal with the problem at hand. One, um, big picture solution. Um, if you had a chance to magic, wave a magic wand uh, and try to solve these problems we're facing in specifically the Asian American community, do you think that there's a solution that can solve this problem? Uh, if, if, I, if I knew uh, if I, if I had any solutions, I would probably have a Nobel Prize. <laughs> a Nobel Peace Prize. Why the Nobel Peace Prize? <laughs> uh, well, either a Nobel Prize or a Nobel Peace Prize. So you're, you're going for Nobel. You want the Nobel Prize. Well, I don't necessarily want a Nobel Prize, but if I had the answers, I would have a Nobel Prize. If I don't have the answers, because I don't have a Nobel Prize. Fair enough. <laughs> So it's so fair enough. Fair enough. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Um, fair enough. I'll accept that as an answer. I guess. Um, well, um, well. Actually, let me ask a side note on that. Um, why is this? Why do you think that there is a solution? I mean, is it just that big of a problem to solve, or is it just that? Is it just too multifaceted? Uh. Yeah, I, I think that. Well, I think that most global issues including U.S. domestic issues are multifaceted and too big for any one individual to, to solve. Um, uh, but that's not to say that there are no solutions, it's just to say that uh, with, with my limited knowledge um, and limited amount of time to have analyzed uh, these problems for this interview, mm -hmm. uh, I, I wouldn't have an answer for that. Sure. Because racism is, uh, is a very complex issue. Um, it would take, like, a sociologist or something to, to answer that. A sociologist, a political scientist, <laughs> a president, and a nuclear physicist. I almost feel like a sort of joke. They all walk into a bar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And the first one goes, fair enough, I, I appreciate your, your insight on that. Thank you for that. And then I'm going to close, I guess this is my second to last question here. Uh, last Thursday in Washington, D.C., um, 
legislation uh, from the U.S. Senate um, passed. Um, uh, I don't know if have you heard of Van Duren's by chance? Uh, not, not before the uh, interview process started. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Uh, the legislation uh, was, is co it's got uh, a majority of co-sponsors in the Senate. Um, it was it passed 99 to 1, in, in the 99 to 1, 98 to 1 in the Senate. Uh, attempting to identify and uh, address COVID-19 and Asian American hate crimes by the Department of, which, uh, by the Department of Justice, or uh, directs the Department of Justice to identify these types of crimes directly in terms of resources. Uh, and this is an attempt to legislate policy and policy prescription in this area. Uh, given that I said all that, that long-winded statement, <laughs> Uh, on that, not to laugh at that issue. Um, do you think something like that will do anything? And I mean anything in terms of lessening the problem, solving the kind of solution, etc. Uh, well, I think everything does something, and <clears throat> this is something, so I think that it'll do something, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know what it will do or how effective it will be. Uh, as far as there will be any side effects. Uh, but mostly, I'm excited not to be going to a concentration camp. Uh, so, okay, i got to ask this. It's, it's just like, that was the, the question, I, one of the questions I wanted to get an answer about. Why, I mean, I, that, I, I can understand that, that, that excitement, uh, very basically. Um, why, why that concern? Uh, well, in the history of the United States, we've seen uh, eras where, uh, due to international conflict, for example, with uh, Japan, uh, uh, American citizens in particular, in this case, Japanese American citizens, uh, basically went to concentration camps because of their... Uh, uh, ethnic and national ties, or, or foreign national ties. So you're referencing the internment camps of World War II? Yeah. Which we, later in the 80s in the Reagan administration, uh, the United States actually issued a formal apology for it. Do it. Oh, we didn't know about that. But, but, but the fact that you're referencing that um, is interesting to me because um, you see, I guess, the fact that you see that the government is taking a different response. <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I'm referencing a sheet that I just got handed. Um, I, so I, I guess I, I, I'm referencing the, uh, the fact that do you feel that the government, instead of, as you say, using, you know, interning people, is attempting to try to help people from your standpoint, do you think that that's a change in, 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 in action. Well, it's definitely in contrast to uh, what happened in the internment camps in World War II. Um, but, uh, I mean, the U.S. government could have... I mean, there was, a whole, there was a whole spectrum of what the U.S. government could have done. And this, was the, this was the outcome of the uh, recent political landscape and I do feel safer um, because of it and uh, although I don't know what the side effects will be uh, legally um, I'm uh, appreciative of what the outcome was and I'm almost proud uh, of what Everybody has come together to get done. Okay. That, I think, concludes my interview with you, sir. Uh, I do want to ask this is my classic catch all phrase, my catch all question, um, about this topic that I appreciate you sharing your experience, your wisdom, your background, I mean, asking, letting, me, letting me ask some purely personal questions. Um, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, um, is there anything I should, I needed to ask you or you would like to say, um, to close out our interview, 
uh, this morning that I didn't ask you tonight about um, the issue of um, hate crimes toward the AAPI community, um, you know, racism and systemic racism towards Asian Americans in this era, uh, the coronavirus, um, racism at all, your experiences with uh, racism, anything at all, you have the floor. Uh, no, you were, you were very thorough uh, in your questions. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And I want to ask this last question, the second, last, last, last question. I didn't offend at all. No, no, I don't, I don't think I offended. Okay. I just want to ask. Don't get offended. I'm from Nevada. <laughs> well, it's a quintessential Nevada phrase, actually. So I, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I'd say that a little, a little bit because we're used to seeing everything around here. Yeah. So I, 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 I appreciate you enduring me, and, uh, and and thank you for your time, sir. And thus concludes my interview with my interview subject on uh, AAPI um, issues and, and COVID-related concerns. Uh, thus concludes the interview at 31 minutes and 40 seconds.